hi guys welcome back to my channel i am so happy to see you all here so in this video we will be talking about finding differentially expressed features and cluster identification in single cell rna seq data we will be using that data to identify cluster markers using the functions that serar package provides so i will be talking about each of those functions and also will be demonstrating how to use those functions and in what context or scenarios using those functions make the most sense so getting straight to the point Let's say you have the single cell RNA seq data. You have processed it and ultimately clustered the data. So your cells have grouped together into clusters, and from then on, you can ask various questions. So let's say the first question you ask is, I have two clusters, and I want to compare between the two clusters, and want to identify genes differentially expressed in one cluster versus the other. So in that case, find markers function makes the most sense because it will allow you to compare between specific clusters. Not necessarily you can compare just one cluster with the other. You can compare one cluster with the other group of clusters as well. The next question you ask is, uh, I want to identify the cell types in my cluster. So what does the each cluster, what is the identity of each cluster? So in that case, uh, it would make sense to identify the markers that are highly expressed for each cluster. So you would essentially want to compare your each cluster versus all the other clusters. Uh, when you want to make such a comparison, then find all markers would make sense because it would iteratively um, compare one cluster with all the other clusters and it will give you the genes that are differentially expressed in one cluster versus the other. So that way you can identify markers for each cluster and these markers will help you identify what are the cell types that form that cluster. So the next scenario is more applicable to us where we have data from two conditions and we have cells present in both those conditions. So let me explain that to you with the help of the diagram. So in this case, uh, there are two cell types and each cell type form one cluster. So cell type A form cluster one and cell type B form this cluster. Also notice that cells are present from uh, different conditions. So the orange cells are from control condition and green cells are from treated condition. At this point, I would want to ask two questions. First is what is the identity of this cluster and what is the identity of this cluster? Meaning what are the cell types that form this cluster and what are the cell type that form this cluster? The second question I would ask is what are the differentially expressed genes in cell type A in cluster that is formed by cell type A between control and the treated condition? So to answer the first question that is uh, for clustered identification, uh, I will run a function called find conserved markers which internally separates out uh, cells according to condition. So in this case it separates out cells according to the treated condition and the control condition. Now it performs uh, comparisons uh, for the cluster in question with all the other clusters and identify uh, genes that are differentially expressed in the cluster in question when it is compared to all the other clusters. So it does that for the uh, treated cells and it does that for the control cells and finally we have two separate list of differentially expressed markers which are combined and returned to us as one list of differentially expressed genes which separates out these cell type from the other cell types or the other clusters and these uh, markers are essentially not differentially expressed due to difference in condition but due to difference in the cell type. To answer the second question, if I'm interested in finding the differentially expressed genes between one cell type but between different conditions, then we can perform that uh, using one of the functions that I mentioned here, but I will be talking about that in more detail in the tutorial part of my video. Now coming to the study design, um, we are using the same data set that we used in the previous video, that is data from eight lupus patients uh, and this data are peripheral blood mononuclear cells which are split into stimulated and control group and the stimulated group was treated with interferon beta. The goal of the study was to assess the cell type specific changes in gene expression uh, in the samples that were treated with interferon beta. But the goal of our analysis today is to identify clusters and to get genes differentially expressed between samples treated with interferon beta and the control group uh, in a particular cell type. So the requirements for today are we will be using Serat uh, because we are using Serat functions to find markers and we will be using tidyverse to manipulate the data. So now let's switch screens to our studio to get started. So let's begin by loading the libraries and loading the data. 
so remember uh, in the previous video we had performed integration using harmony and i had performed some downstream steps like umap and clustering so i will be using the same data today i had saved the data as a dot rds file so i will be reading in the dot rds file today uh, i will also upload this dot rds file on my github so if anyone wants to use this data and recreate this analysis can easily do so so we will use the function called read uh, rds and i will provide the path and the name of the file and let's assign it to a variable so now let's quickly take a look at this data and this is our process data uh, we had run um, a lot of dimensionality reduction steps and we have processed this data so this is the complete data and we will be using this data today so also taking a look at the metadata just to get the clustering information just to make sure our cells belong to some cluster so when we run this we see that we had run clustering and each of our cell belongs to one cluster so let's visualize this data now we will be using dimension plot and I want to visualize this as clusters only so I would not group it or let's group it by clusters So we had identified around 14 clusters. So this is our uh, cluster data and also uh, simultaneously visualize this as condition, group the cells by condition rather. And I want to um, visualize them together so i'm just going to assign them to variables and i want to see the labels on clusters so for the first plot i will be adding value true to labels now let's rerun this so they get assigned to the variables and now let's visualize them side by side so first i want to look at condition and then clusters okay so I have provided uh, the wrong uh, uh, group by uh, parameter because there is no condition column existing in the metadata I need to provide stim because that's where I have my condition um, uh, information stored in so I will change it to stim and then let's run this So now uh, the whole point of doing this is that we have um, data integrated and these data are then also uh, segregated into separate clusters. Now the goal of this um, tutorial is to identify what cells uh, form cluster 12 here for example, what cells form cluster 11. So similarly we want to annotate all the uh, clusters. So that's the first thing we want to do. We want to annotate and identify the cell types that form each cluster. And you would also and the reason I'm visualizing it side by side uh, is because you can see that each cluster contains cells from both the conditions. So let's start by identifying um, the cluster, uh, identifying the cell types that form each cluster. So there are two functions that can be used for cluster identification. One is find all markers and the other is find conserved markers. Uh, if you recall from my presentation, I said that find conserved markers are more uh, applicable to a scenario like ours where we have data from two conditions and we have cells present in both the conditions. Uh, find all markers is more appropriate to use for data where we have data from just one condition or one group. Uh, so we will not be using the find all markers function for our um, cluster identification for our data but I still want to show you how to use them and I want to talk about the various parameters that are that we commonly use and that go into the function. So the function is called find all markers 
the first parameter would be the name of the object the next parameter is log fold change threshold so this value is the minimal log to fold change average expression of uh, the gene in the cluster you're trying to compare relative to the average expression of the gene and all the other clusters combined so the default value is 0.25 so the next uh, uh, parameter is minimum percentage. So this value indicates uh, it will only test those genes uh, that are detected at a minimum uh, fraction of this number of cells uh, in either of the two populations. So let's say if we set it as 0.5. So it will only detect those genes and it will only test those genes rather that are detected at 50% frequency in either of uh, the two clusters or the two populations that we are trying to compare. So 50% is uh, a little stringent. Uh, the default is 0.1. So we'll set it, we'll go with the default or we can change it according to um, our prior knowledge. Uh, by setting it uh, more stringent, it will speed up the process of finding the markers, but at the same time, you lose a lot of markers that are not detected in that many uh, percentage of the, or the fraction of cells. So let's go by default. The next parameter is only positive and we will set this to true. So this will return only positive markers, that is markers that are upregulated. Um, if we wish to have both the upregulated and the downregulated markers, then we can set it to false. So the next parameter is uh, test use and um, this function provides you with a lot of options for the test to use. So you can choose from Wilcox to Poisson to negative binomial to t-test and you can also use external packages like uh, DESeq2. So let's say if I use DESeq2, um, I will provide the slot as counts because the seq2 uses the raw counts uh, even if i don't do that it automatically switches the slot to the counts um, otherwise the default slot is the data slot which stores the normalized uh, counts uh, data and um, if you do not even specify the test use, it goes with the default test. Uh, so these are some of the parameters that uh, most of us use uh, and uh, these are most commonly used uh, parameters. There are also other parameters and I encourage you to read the Serat's uh, Find All Markers vignette because it provides a, a, a well-documented uh, vignette which uh, talks about each of these parameters and the details of uh, these parameters. Uh, we do not need to specify the cluster here because it iteratively compares each cluster to every other cluster so we do not need to provide any cluster information here. Before I move on to talking about find conserve markers function, I forgot to make a very important point, which is to run this analysis that is to find differentially expressed markers on RNA assay. The default assay needs to be RNA. A lot of methods like canonical correlation analysis which is implemented in the Serat package returns a corrected expression matrix for all cells and this corrected expression matrix gets saved in a new assay called the integrated assay. That is not the case with Harmony because Harmony does not return a corrected expression matrix rather it returns a new corrected dimension, dimensionality reduction values. And these are stored in the same RNA assay. So when we integrate the data using Harmony, we do not uh, have a new uh, assay being created, but that is not the case with other integration methods. So it's always advisable to check the default assay before proceeding with this analysis. Let us check our uh, default assay. So I'm confident that the default assay for our uh, data will be RNA. Uh, because there is no other assay being created uh, as our um, integration method does not return any corrected expression matrix. But in case if you have used any other integration methods, then your default assay may be different, uh, could be integrated. And if it is different, then you can set it to RNA by running this command. So now before I move ahead, I want to quickly uh, take a look at our plot again. And now uh, when I'm running the find conserve markers function, I want to identify what cluster three is. So this is going to be my ident one because this is the first cluster uh, that I want to identify. And I want to compare the cluster three with all the other clusters because I want to essentially get the markers that are um, upregulated or expressed in cluster three, which will help me identify what this cluster is, what the cells in this cluster are, com uh, what are the type of the cells that form this cluster. So let's run the function now. So we run find conserve markers. The first parameter would be the name of the data. 
the second parameter is ident1 so as i said the ident1 is the cluster you want to identify so my, i want to identify cluster 3 so my ident1 is going to be 3 ident2 i will not um uh, mention i will not specify ident2 here is because i am not specific i'm not specifically comparing between two clusters so let's say for if i were comparing between cluster 3 and cluster 11 then my ident2 will be cluster 11 and ident1 will be cluster 3 but since i want all the other clusters uh, to be compared with 3 so i will keep my ident i will not specify my ident2 and the third parameter that i'll be providing is the grouping variable so i want to group the cells by stim which has the information on the control or stimulated condition and let's save this to a variable that is called markers for cluster 3 and now let's run this now that this is finished running let's take a look at our markers from for cluster 3 and when you take a look at the results you will be able to see that there are statistics being calculated for uh, both the groups that is the control and the stimulated group so recall in my presentation i mentioned that find conserved markers function internally separates out cells by condition this is exactly what it did it separated out the cells by condition and for each condition it compared the cluster 3 to all the other clusters so going over the results here, let's take a look at the first gene. So this gene has a p-value of, and we are looking at the control group first. So this gene has a p-value of zero and it has this much fold change. So this upregulated by this much fold change in cluster three compared to all the other clusters. And this gene is detected in 97% of the cells in cluster three compared to 20% of the cells in all the other clusters combined. And the adjusted p-value is zero as well. So similarly, we can also interpret the values for a stimulated group and we have the same set of statistics for that group as well. Let's visualize this top feature in our data now. So we will visualize this as a feature plot where the first parameter is the name of our data set. The features, we will provide this feature into our features parameter. So this is the name of the gene and I want to set the minimum cutoff value to 10th quantile and now let's run this. I will be explaining uh, what does the 10th quantile mean here and the minimal cutoff here in a second but first let's visualize this plot. We can visually attest to what we found in our results so this gene is uh, highly expressed in uh, the cells uh, which are a part of this cluster that is cluster 3 compared to rest of the clusters which make this gene a marker for uh, cluster 3. So coming back to the min cutoff parameter here so this value essentially is the expression cutoff so for cells uh, where uh, the expression for this gene is lower than this value the cells will be in gray and if the expression for this gene in the cells is greater than uh, this value then those cells will be in varying proportions of uh, uh, purples here so basically this min cutoff value is um, playing with the contrast uh, of this uh, data set playing with the scale it will not be filtering out any cells or removing any cells but it just plays with the scales here and playing with the contrast uh, used to color the cells so just to give you a little intuition about uh, the quantile here so let's say we have uh, data that looks something like this so let's say we have five numbers and these are arranged as per the uh, ascending order of their magnitude and let's say if we want to find the quantile 50 for these numbers so i'm just going to repeat the same uh, command here and when i run this the 50th quantile is 3 so this means the 50th percentile of these values is 3 that's the median value so similarly if i say the 10th quantile of 
these numbers would be 1.4 would be around some somewhere between 1 and 2 so similarly our data will also be divided into multiple quantiles and the cutoff we use here is the 10th quantile so any cells having a lower than 10th quantile expression value for this gene will be in gray and if the cells have higher uh, percent higher expression for this gene greater than 10th quantile value will be in the varying proportion of um, purples all right so now um, i want to rename uh, the idents of my cell from uh, cluster 3 to uh, cd16 monocytes because this is a marker for cd16 monocytes so the cells in cluster 3 are cd16 monocytes so before i rename the idents let's quickly take a look at our idents and what the name of the object so idents is nothing but how our cells are identified by so the identity of our cells right now are set to the cluster number so our cells are right now identified by cluster number and i want to replace uh, the name of the cells from cluster 3 from those cells that are belonging to cluster 3 from 3 to the name of the cells that is cd16 monocytes to do that we rename idents and the first uh, parameter will be the name of the object and then i provide the uh, cluster number in these quotes and then provide the name of the cells so which are cd16 monocytes and now i assign it back to my object because i want the changes to be reflected in the same object and let's uh, look at the idents again and now you'll see that some of the cells have cd16 mono and when you look at the levels you will be able to see that you have cd16 mono and you have all the other numbers and you won't be able to find the cluster 3 because we have replaced the cluster 3 name the 3 cluster number with the name of the cells at this point i know there will be a confusion as to how did i know this is a marker for cd16 monocytes and the data that i'm using today the cells in my data has been previously characterized and studied and the markers for those cells have been identified before so i can leverage that information and use those markers to identify the cells in my data set Cluster identification is one of the most difficult and tedious process while analyzing single cell data. It is often not a straightforward process and it requires multiple iterations uh, and requires you to go back and play around with the clustering resolution as well as uh, thresholds of the parameters in your find markers uh, function. Uh, also, there are various uh, marker databases where you can go to find uh, markers for your specific cell types like a single cell signature database, Panglo database, cell marker, which is another great resource for uh, to fetch for markers for cell types. And again, uh, a lot of data uh, is being generated. It's a lot of single cell data is being generated, which is which are the part of the manuscripts where they try to study and characterize these tissues and identify the markers for novel cell types. Those again could be a great resource uh, to get the markers for certain uh, cell types. In addition to that, there are also automatic cell annotation tools that are reference based or marker based and I will soon be making a video on those automatic annotation tools and uh, demonstrate how to use those tools to annotate the cells in your data set. So coming back to our code now, let's visualize our rename idents. So we are visualizing it using the um, dim plot and using the reduction as umap and want to set the label as true so we would want to see the cluster 3 being labeled as cd16 monocyte so just zooming in on the plot we can see that the cluster 3 is renamed as cd16 monocyte and the rest of the clusters still show the cluster number because we haven't identified them yet so this was just for cluster 3 now uh, in order to um, identify the rest of the clusters we would have to repeat the same process that we did for cluster 3 that is to compare each cluster with all the rest of the clusters identify the markers look at the markers identify them and uh, uh, accordingly uh, name or identify the cell type based on the markers that are expressed so in order to do that, I will be required to write a loop where it will iteratively take a cluster and compare it with the rest of the clusters. Uh, I am not going to do that here. So uh, I already have the cell annotations provided in my metadata. So to show you that, 
uh, the cells have already been assigned to a cell type so each cell has been assigned to a cell type here so i'm go just going to use the annotations provided here however this is uh, not the case in a real world scenario in a real world scenario you will not be provided with the data uh, with cells completely annotated this is as i said a well characterized data set this data set has been previously uh, being studied and the cell types have been characterized and i'm just leveraging uh, the findings from uh, the studies and i'm using it to demonstrate uh, how to uh, perform cluster identification and find the differentially expressed genes so going back to the code i'm going to set the idents uh, of my data to the idents that they are uh, to the sirad annotations that they have provided so i'm just going to set those and now just let's take a look at the idents and we can see that now instead of the cluster numbers we can see the name of the type of the uh, cells so let's visualize this data now as a dimension plot and instead of the numbers now we should be able to see the cell type names i'm just going to set the label as true and now let's run this and we can see that each cell belongs to a um, specific uh, cell type cluster so we see that each cluster has a specific uh, name here which is the type of the cell that the cluster is composed of so coming to the next part of our goal which is to uh, identify genes that are differentially expressed between conditions in a particular cell type so let's say in our case we want to look at the changes in the gene expression patterns of cd16 monocytes after interferon beta treatment so in that case, we will have to play around and change the labeling of the cells. So right now, all the cells in cluster 3 are labeled as CD16 monocytes. But what I want to do is I want to split this cluster into um, control and stimulated or treated with interferon beta. So I need to change the labeling of all the cells according to what condition they belong along with the type of the cells. And that will be more clear once we perform the following steps after that. So first, let us create another column in our metadata uh, that has both the cell, cell type and condition. And let's concatenate that data. So we have cell annotations and we want to concatenate it with the conditions. Which is in stem, and now let's visualize our metadata. So we can see that we have created an additional column that, along with the type of the cell, we have also concatenated information on whether the cell belongs to the control group or the stimulated group. Now let us change the identities of uh, cells. So let us set it to uh, the values in the new column that we created. So let us set to the cell type and condition. And now let's visualize as a dimension plot. So we provide with the name of the data set, reduction as UMAP and want the labels to be shown. And now I'm just going to zoom in on the plot. You can see that this plot is more hazy and not clear and each cluster has multiple labels. Uh, the cells are now belonging to uh, two conditions that is stimulated and controlled. So this is exactly what we want and you will see how we use these uh, identities of the cluster, the new identities of these uh, clusters to compare the cells belonging to different identities with each other to find the differentially expressed genes. It will make more sense in the, in the next step that I'm going to perform. So to compare uh, the cells of the same cell type between conditions, we will use a function called find markers. And this is the first function I spoke about in my presentation, which we will be using to compare between the clusters. So we will leverage the updated identities of the cells where we will be comparing the CD16 monocyte uh, cells belonging to CD16 monocyte stimulated group versus the cells belonging to CD16 monocyte control group. 
so let us find markers now so we'll use find markers function the first parameter is the name of the data set ident one here is cd16 mono stim and ident two is cd16 mono control and let's assign this to a variable called beta interferon response and now let's run this this has finished running now let's take a look at our results so we can see that we have found genes differentially expressed when uh, we have controlled uh, we have compared cells uh, between uh, cd16 monocyte stimulated group and cd16 monocyte control group so essentially these are the genes that are upregulated in a stimulated group versus the control group in cd16 monocyte so we have the p values the average log fold change and the percentage of the cells that uh, detect these genes as well as the adjusted p values as the last step, let's plot the um, uh, expression of features uh, or markers detected by find conserved marker function and the find markers function. Uh, visualizing it will make it more clear as to what each function does and what sort of markers they detect. So let's get the markers detected by find conserved markers function. So these are the markers. And now let's plot the uh, expression using a feature plot so we provide the name of the data set and in the features we provide it with the features we want to plot so we are using two features from the find uh, conserve markers result and we'll be using the top result from the uh, find markers function so this is the uh, marker that's differentially expressed and we want to split it by the condition and we provide a min cutoff value of the 10th quantile and let's run this and just zooming in on the plot so now we see that plots are split by the control and uh, stimulated group and we can see that the first two markers um, show expression show high level of expression in this cluster which is cluster 3 compared to the rest of the clusters and the last uh, feature or the last marker shows that it's highly expressed in all the cells in the stimulated group compared to the control group uh, interferon beta treatment uh, causes the ifit1 gene not only to be upregulated in cluster 3 but in all the other uh, cell type compared to uh, the control group so uh, this uh, visualization clearly shows us how differently both the uh, functions work where uh, find conserve markers identifies markers which are upregulated in one cluster compared to the other regardless of the condition whereas find marker specifically compares between uh, the conditions and provides us with genes that uh, are upregulated in response to treatment so that brings me to the end of my video uh, i will be uploading my script to the github i will also add the data that i used today to my github and will be adding the link to my github in the description below so please make sure you check that out and i will also add link to the additional resources which will help understand some of these concepts even better and if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.